Thanks for staying with us at STL Live. I'm Sarah Thompson, and my guest today is Kenneth J. Pruitt from Diversity Awareness Partnership. Thank you again for being here. My pleasure. So I thought for uh, this segment, we could really focus on some events that you have coming sure. up. And the first one is actually this week, yes. Thursday, uh, the Interfaith yes. event. Tell me mm -hmm. a bit more about that. Yeah, so every year we publish an interfaith calendar. It's um, a publication that has a couple of dozen different faith traditions. So there's a holy day or a holiday for every day of the year. It's an easy way to be inclusive mm -hmm. around your organization. Um, so our event that we use to launch that calendar, we take the time to actually have some discussion involved with it. So this year, uh, my colleague Katrina Salama will be facilitating a discussion at the Ethical Society, and that's this Thursday at 5.30. And uh, the topic this year is going to be talking about the differences between culture and religion. Can we suss them apart? What's the, what are the differences? What are the similarities? Uh, and using uh, Islam as uh, kind of a platform to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. So that's this Thursday, and uh, folks can sign up on our website to attend. And this is open to? It's free and open to the public, okay, yes. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And then your big one, you have a big annual event, and that's the Diversity Summit. Right. And that takes place in June? That'll be on June 6th uh, at the Ritz-Carlton this year. They're hosting us. It's going to be wonderful. It's, um, that's our big annual event. It's, it's a day long. Um, we will likely have three different uh, slates of breakout sessions where people will hear from and get facilitated conversations by practitioners throughout the region, uh, specifically on different topics related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then uh, we usually have a keynote speaker to provide some kind of baseline of knowledge around these topics. Mm -hmm. So it's a really good way to get involved with this work throughout the whole yeah. region. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then Listen, Talk, Learn. Yeah. So Listen, Talk, Learn is a program that we started doing, the DAP started doing after the death of Michael Brown in 2014 and all of the conversations we started having in public around race all of a sudden. And my opinion is we just didn't have a lot of practice being able to do that in public. So we wanted to create a two hour space for folks to have those difficult conversations. And uh, so we've been doing those for free, usually every other month or so at different hosts throughout the region. Uh, again, just to, as much as we can, provide tools for mm -hmm. folks. We're not going to solve racism in two hours, but really to empower people to have those conversations in their contexts mm -hmm. um, and work slowly but surely towards more equity. Mm -hmm. I wonder, uh, when you're facilitating these discussions, kind of what you're processing on your way, let's say, home, and where I'm going with that is sometimes when I've gone places, there's this sense that not everyone has an equal voice that has been heard, and right. they're just looking for a platform to either vent or share their thoughts or really sure. just to fire people up to get engaged or involved. And mm -hmm. so what can happen is like there's dialogue sometimes right. or a lot of times you can see sometimes when it can get out of control where people are just sure. sort of going on and on. And so I wonder yeah. where, from where you set, sit, do you feel like, do you, when do you see progress sort of being made? Like when those yeah. dialogues are happening or just allowing people sometimes, even if it takes months just to get a chance to have a platform to speak. Does that kind of make sense? I think it does. And I mean, I think a lot of people in our region just don't have those opportunities mm -hmm. to have those discussions and they really seek those, uh, these LTLs out as that resource. Um, but we definitely create a, a list of expectations, of guidelines for how the conversation is going to mm -hmm. go down. We don't want it to just be um, a space where folks are kind of complaining and frustrated. We want to make sure that that's um, facilitated and centered around a productive dialogue. And that's really the key. We're actually revising the way we do it now to make sure that we are practicing active listening. It sounds mm -hmm. so simple, but how often throughout your day are you having a conversation with someone where you can tell they're just waiting for you to be done to kind of clip in on the end of it. Um, so active listening is something we can really yeah. work on too. Very, very challenging. Last kind of comment I wanted to make is this, and I know you've heard this before, is this big overarching question, which is the people who really, one might say that people who really need sort of diversity and inclusion training or discussion are the ones who aren't signing up for that, right. for it, the ones who aren't proactively going after it, or the ones who are resistant to it. Right. So in the work that you do, how do you, again, like, where's that middle ground? How do we reach the people yeah. who just really don't want to ultimately be reached? Yeah, I think we have to remember that we are all, we all need to be involved in this work uh, of creating a more equitable region. And I really view the LTL as a place to, as I said, provide resources for people to just have that one conversation they were not necessarily waiting to have with um, their uncle who said a thing at the Thanksgiving table or um, to have a difficult conversation with a coworker who's maybe committing some microaggressions around the office. Mm. Um, just 
getting people to be more brave to influence the social circles that we all run in. Um, people are a lot more willing to listen to the people that they care about than to some random guy walking in the room talking about inclusion. Yeah, I know that's a really good point. Well, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. It's my that pleasure. That was a really great discussion. For more information, the information's right there. It's Diversity Awareness Partnership, increasing awareness, facilitating engagement, and providing education about diversity and inclusion. To learn more about the Interfaith event coming up this Thursday or the Diversity Summit, or the Listen, Talk, Learn series, you can go to DAPSTL.org. Well, there's more STL Live right after this. Please stay with us.